I didn't have a plan to be a real estate developer. Prior to that, what were you engaged in? I was a hustler. <laughs> I was, you know, it's good that you asked this question that how was the beginning. I'm a developer, so usually what happens is that um, people come and they want to buy the homes I live in. My first house that I built, I couldn't sell because it was in a poor location. That's interesting. The second one that I built, I was struggling to sell while I hadn't sold the first one because it was also not in a very good location. Then the third one that I built that was in a good location, while I was living in it, I sold it. When, while I was selling it, the first one that I built had been marked for demolition, for the Awushi Pukwase Highway. So it was demolished, I got compensated. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> so the first one where you know if you sell or no? Yeah. Okay, then that, that, that makes it good. So it was, it was demolished and I was well compensated. And that served as a launch pad for my real estate venture. Okay. Well, what, what I like about it, to even build one is not easy. From my, from my point of view. No, it's true, it's not easy. So to build one and not be able to sell and build another and not sell. And oh, because you see, the way I'm talking about it, you think I built it overnight, no. I spent between 2006 to 2010 to build these two houses I'm talking about. But the nice thing is, as I grew older, I built faster. Built faster. I started this house in December 2020. No, sorry, December 2021. I moved in 15th May 2022. Like five months or six months. Me say then, all everything there, all the resources. Yeah, na nambu baby say, and then you see no bottom. So if you look at how long it took me to build the first house, almost five years to complete the two. And this one took five months. Yeah. Usually as you progress, you make more and things are achieved easier. Okay, so for, for those who are up and coming, they would like to know what the, the beginning entails. And usually we see the end of people and we assume <laughs> that it was rosy or yeah. <laughs> this is where so we want to get there. That's where that's what we see, so that's where we want to get. But we usually don't see the genesis. So is there any particular how you were able to raise funds? But, but from what was from, what, from what you time? were saying, it looks like the real estate venture was some by accident. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't planned. No, I didn't I didn't have a plan to be a real estate developer. Prior to that, what were you engaged in? I was a hustler. <laughs> I was, you know, it's good that you asked this question that how was the beginning? <laughs> the beginning was scary. And I know most people feel that way. I didn't work for anybody after tech. Because before I went to tech, I had the privilege of working as a clerk at Smithen. I decided that I won't work for anybody. Internship or actual work? Actual work. I was a contract staff for almost two years. At the time, when you finish SSS, you had to sit home for two years before you go into university. So those two years, I spent them working with Snet as a clerk, and it was very difficult to work. Waking up early to ride the bus. But more importantly, my time at the, at the pension house, Two friends that I got, Agabus and um, Sintim, pushed me and encouraged me to go to school. 
because they brought it to my attention that if at the time the pay was great for me, guess how much the pay was? <laughs> In today's money is 244 Ghana cities. No way. My pay was 2.4 million. million. <laughs> 2.4 million, 40 cities. Wow. Charlie, when that money comes, the whole are crap in my own. <laughs> Club Benjamin Kwa. Because I live in my father's house. Me did it free. Me did that free. I can't buy an agenda for that. I don't want to pay any car. My two foot or car. My fair area boy, snow suit. Cotton club. Now whatever. Tantra Hill. I, so I grew up in in between Dome and Tantra Hill. So I lived in Dome and then later on we moved to Tantra Hill. But the beginning was very scary. This is why it was scary. This is the time that the banks had come into Ghana fresh. I'm talking about the Nigerian banks. Okay. And the, the, the thing in vogue was to join the bank. I don't know if you've seen how those bank boys dress and they sit in the car. Mm. At the time, they had all these Civic, um, Corolla, Zenith Bank, GT Bank, <laughs> UBA. Then they both suit, correct <laughs> suit. Oh. Then they give them driver. Like, like they, yeah. <laughs> then they give them driver, then they sit the back. <laughs> My guy, me too, I get some Vento, VW Vento. <laughs> We that my first car with original air conditioning day inside. Because the one before, maybe cadet. Uh -huh. You know, gay, see where I go put in AC, that'd be the end of the car. <laughs> I feel the car, so I say, Bonnet. Uh -huh. mm. Let me try to walk around. I register company, they my armpit. Mm. I say how they look for business. So if I see, say, somebody day some officer, then I'll come there, say, oh, Charlie. Um, can I get supplies? Say what I say from Amina to Zinabo. Anything you want make a supply, I will feel supply. And my girlfriend at the time basically left me because she said I should go and look for a job. And I said that I, I had a job. I was running my business. But I guess she wasn't confident in what I was doing. And somebody, you know, this fine Taiwan boys, almost bustling time, which is that I know. Package. Slim. 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 A um, Vimboot caravan. And the guy come take my girl. But it was cool. The girl had been with her since we were 17. This time I'm talking, we're about 27. Oh, it gave you any type of motivation? It gave me big Vim. Because, but when she left, it was a blessing because the next girlfriend I took after her was a Nigerian girl, Ibuku. She came up with the name Saka Homes. That Nigerian girl gave me vim. Like no I no see some before. Because by that time I was building my first house. And it was in Anya last stop. The road to Anya was rough. This my girlfriend came from London. We sat in the car from Tantra Hill to the site. And when she got there, her legs were on the dashboard. She was like, Where now? Where now? There be a house over by site now. Hey, my guy. I don't know. You know that feeling with young boy? Tell your mind for strong. Yeah, this one. They build some one house. Yeah. Least does not tell you at this side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They move some you go material. Go yeah, you know, like they do some big yeah, things. You know, the way, uh, <laughs> at 27 Empire, they build four bedroom house with basement parking. And the way I picture the thing, the way they see my body, you know. Now, girl, you better come. When I went, I did be also quite sight. 
This is your second girlfriend. No, the first your original girlfriend. girlfriend. Oh, okay. This is before the storm. The before the storm, yeah. To those things all then they see say, I call it crab. Before butter is quite juma, I was saying, oh, well, baby business. Hmm. But God being so good. And I spent a lot of time praying at the time. I never want to forget that part of life because I spent quality time praying. At the time, James Sir was at um, Action Chapel and they had a program called Jericho Hour. So one day, I offered my friend who had come from America, I left to Action Chapel. And when I got there, Charlie, hey, Land Cruiser Benz, Thursday, I had a cash for there and I see my cadet. <laughs> when me I did the house, they sleep. I said, no, man, let <laughs> me try to go pray some. And that started my time at um, Jericho Hour. Around that same time, too, my mom introduced me to Pure Fire Marco Ministries around the uh, Kisema there. So I spent some time there. I studied a lot about tithing and sowing and covenanting. And I committed to these things diligently. I was actually tithing a bit more than I should tithe. So for instance, if I for pay tithe 750 cities, I could do 1,000. So uh, let me come in. So did you believe that these things will get you the results? Yes. Or you're just trying no, no, to no. see? No, no, no. Because, you know, spending time in those churches, we actually got teachings, not just praying. So there were Bible teachings that were taught. And I hearkened to the voice and I connected to that. So I tithed diligently. I sowed. I covenanted. You know, sometimes I hear people say all sorts of things about these things, but I have experienced it. I think it gave me an edge in life. The opportunities that have come my way is not because I'm the best, but it's because I'm favored. The thing that brought me the most money is a business that I didn't put in anything. All I had to do was talk with my mouth convince the contractor to give me the contract, convince the supplier to supply me on credit. And I stood in the middle. For everything that left to here, I made a decent commission. And that's how I built my houses. That's how I established myself. If this is not favor, what is it? It can happen to anybody. Why me? So, after a while, I escalated it and went into covenanting. I believe in God. I believe in the Bible, I go to church. So I covenanted with God and every five years I renew the covenant. The last renewal was the 43 bed hospital ward I donated to Achimata School on my 40th birthday. Two years time, I have another covenant to renew and that's how I renew my covenant. By doing something substantial for humanity because I see humanity as God. Or say, why am I? Because I don't know God. I can, I can only pray and hearken to His voice through the Bible. But if I do for you, I do for you. You are God. So I think those things also helped me at the time. Because the deal I got, the final day of the bidding, I was in contention with Zoom Lion. And that's when Zoom Lion had come fresh. I don't know if you remember them. They had these blue and white tankers all over Accra. It was for a water supply contract. They brought two new trucks to brawl that day. I came with some Bukulu Maja tanker. They sent, if I remember right, about three or four people for the presentation. I went there in my sun boots, my green khaki trousers, and my church. That time, can I depend on dressing? <laughs> my hosla <laughs> shada. <laughs> trousers in the crowd, so I pack a crowd. And my taking. But one key thing that 
I had learned, and this is from reading books like what we were just discussing, The Secret, um, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I learned that when you are speaking, you should say we. And not when you, when you go somewhere to look for business, and you, even it's just you, don't say me. Because when you say me, there are people that are thinking, ah, nah, I'm a man business. Why am I having a crew? Contractor says, I'm a man. So the whole time I was sitting there, I said, We at admins, let me grab this room. Me and the secretary, me and the reception, me and the gate man, me and the accountant. Multiple personalities. Listen, we at admins, me, me, and Zoom Lion went in first. So by the time they came out, Taya was deflated. But I had learned something through all this reading that sometimes before you face such challenges, just look in the mirror and, you know, give pump, yourself pump, 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 I was just about to go and I, I realized that I told them that I have something to tell them. We are a small company and we value their business because we're already supplying them. It's just that now we're supplying Fidelity Bank in the building, Rich Tower, and Brawl had come to take over the building and they were taking over all those buildings in Rage. So the business was becoming bigger. So I told them that, look, water. I said, we've been delivering. But with this new buildings presents a very big opportunity for us. It's something that we value and we'll do anything to keep. Before I leave you, I want to give you the assurance that any day we are called on, any time of the day, I will personally be here to deliver. Even if it's 2 a.m., we'll be here. Later on, I found out that that emotional thing I did is what gave us the business. It spoke from the heart. Yeah. By the time it was true. It, yeah, was, it was true. true. <laughs> he he believed it. Time, if, 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 if you would have been there. Kali? Yeah. We did most of the work at night mm -hmm. because we were getting water from Taifa or Fancor and where transitions is now. And the best time to go was at night because there was no traffic. At the peak of it, we were doing about 80 trips a day. Because at the time we got La Palm to about five towers from Brawl. There was a time we were doing a cram all. Because if you remember the late 2000s, water was a problem around that side of town. And that's how we're able to. That's that's how we're able to make money to establish. But like from the conversation, I get one thing. Like it seems you are very decisive. Like if it's something makes sense, you just. You go yeah, you know me. I'm a cool man. I like money. I like profits. Once. I analyzed. Later on, I got to do an MBA in 2007, and that also added to how I was thinking already. But once I do the analysis, and the return is good vis-a-vis -vis the risk, I'll put in the money. I'll put in the effort. But at 43, one thing that I've come to believe in is that we have to be deliberate about life. I wish I knew that in my 20s. You have to be intentional. You have to be intentional. You have to be deliberate about where you want to be, how you want to be. Don't play with it. Me, I'm living my best life. So what, what, do, you, what do you think about this um, culture where it's like formula, no? I mean, they are too hard, 
go to school, get married, have children, and things. So, to hey, actually be intentional, you have to be a member. Yeah. So you know, have... mm -hmm. there's no. There has to be a rethinking, especially about how we guide our children. I know people who wanted to do art, but they were forced to do science. I know people who wanted to do science, but they were forced to do law. And in the long run, when they become adults, they all veer back to their former love. So, personally, Saka, I don't intend to tell my child what they should be. But whatever they decide to be, I'll make a conscious and deliberate effort to promote it and make them thrive. Because when I say you should be deliberate about life, When I set out, I said I want to travel. When I was marrying, I told my wife, me, I won't stay home. My vision is to see 100 countries. So I'm going to work hard, make money, and travel. That's very key for me, and I'm going to do that. Secondly, I'm not somebody who sits at home or sits in one place for long. So, and I like to chase money. If you know these things about yourself, share them because they can, be, they can become problems for you if you don't. Yeah. You know, but tell, but, but okay. some people don't realize that about themselves later on after they are married before they realize that about themselves. Oh, well, as soon as, as soon as you realize it, bring it up. Life is not cast in stone. Life is dynamic. So whatever relationship you are in, anytime you feel something different, anytime you feel a certain way, you're only on earth once. But it's not by force that the way we started, and that's how we'll end it. We should be, a lot of us are not bold about our, our, our truth. Or we are not bold about our, our feelings and hence, it goes a long way to affect us without us even knowing. But I think that if most of us will learn to be deliberate about sharing how we feel and how we see things, maybe life will be a bit easier for us. So, I, I mean, I'm curious about how was growing up, like how was your parenting, your parents' oh, environment? Oh, I'm one of the fortunate ones. I had wonderful parenting. We were two, my sister and I, and my parents. We didn't have a car until I was 18. Occasionally, my mom would get her official car, so we would get to feel some small that I be. But we were your regular. Regularly, we do the normal trotro, normal life. We had three square meals a day. My dad was a great cook. So, he would cook for us. He will. Charlie, we had a good time. You know, we were that family that my mom would cook, put in a basket and we'll go to Labadi Beach with our father and we'll sit on the beach and have food. If it's raining, you know, those times they had these big pans. So my dad would fill it with water and put it on the compound and my sister and I will be inside and we'll be playing. That was our swimming pool. Yeah. Mm. When Blue Label Sardine came, I don't know if you guys remember Blue Label. <laughs> Blue Label, Sardine, every morning. Mm -hmm. At the time, my mom went to UCC to do a course, so we're living with our dad alone. In the morning, he would make us an omelette with sardines and bread, 
before he leaves at 6.30 to go to work. Then our lunch was there. Uh, when he comes in the evening, we'll have supper. I think by 12, I could cook. So my sister and I started cooking. And um, my parents died. My dad died five years ago. My mom died 10 years ago. But parenting was nice. I went to Achimota school from class one right to SS3. I went to, I started Legon. Then I left Legon to Tech because um, at the time Legon admissions used to come before Tech admissions. So I was in Tech for four years. I studied um, rural art and industry. I specialized in metal work and woodwork. So if you look at my buildings, I use a lot of wood and metals. It's all from my training at Tech. Then I did an MBA. I specialized in marketing. Then I did a PMP in 2012 and I haven't gone to school again. I'm looking for money. Mm -hmm. It seems everything you studied in school is relevant to. Yeah, and it's like your whole life, because your childhood, I'm sure you, your parents were very involved. They made you open. They, everything contributed to how you are now. But for some people, when they join their childhood to their school and things, where they want to be, you know, I can't get them there. Well, it's never too late. That's why I'm saying you should be deliberate. There's, there's no, you know, we try to make excuses and blame our parents. There's westernization and TV, shame me, brain, I'm and people are doing. And my parents, your parents haven't done anything. <laughs> you are alive. But, you are yeah. breathing. You are eating. Make you just reset. But reset. Were your, were your parents restrictive in any way? Or did you feel at the time? Oh, so. Yes, You're being one of the things that I wanted to do the most was to become a sexologist. Okay, a what? Sex, 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 sexologist. Oh, okay. What's that? What's that? You don't know who a sexologist is. <laughs> no, sax is Not a, a saxophone. Sax okay. Sex, sex, no, no, no. sex. S-E-X. Sexology. Okay. okay. Yeah, no, I don't know. I, don't I wanted know. to be a sexologist. It's the study of the human sexual relationship for report writing and advice. So... While I was doing my MBA, I contacted the Institute of Sexology in Johannesburg. And I started, I had a t-shirt. Um, I'm a sexologist. I was 27 at the time. I moved out of my parents' house when I was 28. Then one day, so when I wear that t-shirt, I, I don't leave the house with it. <laughs> I will wear another shirt on it when you leave to go to school. When I get to school, then I'll be doing my sexology nonsense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One day I got home, I entered my room, took off my first shirt, and my parents called me because we lived alone. I think at the time my sister was abroad or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then this is me, I came to the hall in my t shirt. Hello! <laughs> 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 When I took that shirt off, I never saw it again. Yeah. I had my first child while I was still with my parents. And I wasn't married to the girl. It's one of these things here. I have. And I couldn't tell my parents about it because I never even discussed having sex with my parents. How much more I have a baby. But all along, I was planning that when I'm 28, I move out. So, fortunately, it came just around the time I was going to move out. I moved out in June 2008. I think my child was born in July. But the lady's parents came to tell my parents just around them, so I went to face the Sahindri. In retrospect, it's not a big deal. That's Those of you who like doing abortion, <laughs> forget it, you don't have enough children. When you impregnate someone, collect it. Collect it. You don't know what that child is going to be. I just came from Akusombo this weekend to see this is my child who just turned 15. And it gives me great joy. <laughs> 